Next, let's consider how the presence of a material will affect the propagation of plane waves. Again, let's recall the source-free wave equations. We said that the wave number k is given by omega times the square root of mu epsilon. This is where we got that the phase velocity of a wave is 1 over the square root of mu epsilon, and showed that the phase velocity in free space is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. But if we aren't in free space, mu and epsilon have to scale by the relative permeability and relative permittivity of the material in which the wave is propagating. We can account for this pretty easily in the equations for wave number and phase velocity. But let's take this one step further. Suppose the wave is traveling in a lossy dielectric. We model dielectric losses using a complex permittivity. In this case, we let epsilon equal epsilon prime, a real part, plus j epsilon double prime, an imaginary part. In this case, the wave equations will have to use a complex propagation constant. So we will define gamma as the complex propagation constant. Gamma is equal to j times the wave number k, or j times omega square root of mu epsilon. We will split this into its real and imaginary components using this equation, gamma equals alpha plus j beta. This allows us to talk separately about the effects of each part of gamma. Let's reconsider the equation for a simple plane wave described by this electric field. This is propagating in the plus x direction and pointing in the plus z direction. Previously, the exponential form would have been e to the negative jkx, but now we're using gamma, so it's e to the negative gamma x, or e to the negative alpha plus j beta x. So for the lossless case where alpha equals zero, you just have this harmonic term, e to the j beta x, which is a sinusoid of constant magnitude. But if alpha is not zero, then that sinusoid is being scaled by a decaying exponential. That looks like this. Here we can see the three plots, the lossless sinusoid, the decaying exponential, and the lossy sinusoid, which is the product of the other two plots. Note that the frequency of the wave is unchanged by the introduction of loss. The wavelength is still equal to 2 pi over the lossless propagation constant, beta.